Now, if you believe the headlines, Britain is being swamped by migrant workers. Not so, say, many farmers who claim that much of this year's crop will be left to rot in the fields because there just aren't enough people to pick it. And it's a situation that they believe will only get worse because of changes in the immigration rules. But is this the real reason behind the labour shortage? Adam has this report. It's early morning and picking's begun on this fruit farm in Staffordshire. My name is Gina and I come from Romania. My name is Nick. I'm from in Moldova. My name is Christina. I am from Lithuania. Running a busy farm like this one is a bit like managing a Premiership football team. The squad is made up of some homegrown talent, but primarily international imports. But it wasn't always like this. Traditionally, at harvest time, it would be British people doing the picking. For example, in Kent, thousands of Londoners came down from the East End to pick the hops. Elaine Clark runs a soft fruit farm with her brother in Tamworth. She employs over 150 pickers each season. However, this year, like last, she's short-staffed. Elaine, tell me about last year. Well, last year was a disaster for us. Um, we lost in the region of 80,000 kilograms of strawberries um, due to you know, insufficient pickers and not being able to get them picked. And that's around, what, a couple of hundred thousand punnets? Yeah, it is. That's right. And why didn't you have the pickers? Well, um, I mean, if we go back sort of 10, 15 years, if we'd have put an advertisement in the local paper, we'd have, the phone would have rung off the hook. We'd have had no end of people. Um, as it stands now, we, we rely very heavily on uh, labour from overseas. I mean, we've got no um, UK citizens working for us picking strawberries at all. Um, but with the, with the advent of the new countries joining the EU, now they can go to any job within the UK. There's, there's less interest from, from their part to come picking strawberries. With no one from the UK wanting to do the work, it's down to the Europeans to fill the gap. The problem is that not all European workers are the same. Augi is from Lithuania. Lithuania is one of the A8 countries, the name given to the countries which joined the EU in 2004. So he's free to work wherever he wants within Europe. And the problem is that often isn't agriculture, but more highly paid jobs elsewhere. Fedor is a student from Russia, a non-EU country. He, like the majority of workers here, is a student on the Seasonal Agricultural Workers Scheme, or SAWS for short. Their permit only allows them to work on this farm and for a set period of time. It's these people that farmers want more of, but they're in short supply. SAWS was set up over 50 years ago as a way of making up the shortfall in workers, which occurred at harvest time. The scheme has always been aimed at non-EU students, but now the government wants to change that. One of the fundamentals of the scheme is that it's a permit-based scheme, so um, there is a limit on the number of students that can come into the country. Um, that limit was set at 25,000 permits, or work cards as they're known. Um, the Home Office took a decision uh, two years ago to cut that number of permits from 25,000 to 16,250. The Home Office has also taken the decision that they should come from Romania and Bulgaria, who, who joined the European Union last year. The reason for this change is because instead of having an open-door policy on immigrants from the EU, the Home Secretary, John Reid, announced that he wanted to restrict and control the number of workers coming from Bulgaria and Romania by forcing unskilled workers into the schemes such as SAWS. Jimmy Davis is the general manager of Hops Labour Solutions, one of the companies that recruit the casual staff. He doesn't think he can find enough workers next year purely from Romania and Bulgaria. Those two countries just aren't capable of supplying that number of people and, and that's where the concerns are. There's no long-term security for labour supply in the industry. If you take Ukraine and Russia as countries individually, they're, they're very big, they're very agricultural countries. Romania and Bulgaria are not. Ukraine alone has 200,000 agricultural students studying in it, whereas Romania and Bulgaria put together would have no more than 40,000. So the sourcing ability is just vastly increased. So what are you doing then? Are you lobbying the government? 
Well, we're lobbying them as hard as we can. We write to Home Office Ministers, we don't get replies. Now, they claim to be listening to the industry, and I don't believe they are if they're not replying to letters. Everyone we've spoken to has lobbied and written to the government to find out why they've made these changes. So we approached the government to ask them some similar questions, but they didn't want to speak to us either. But they did give us this statement. We are phasing out low-skilled migration from outside the EU because we think businesses should hire those close to home first. It's not just farmers in this country that have been suffering from a change in their government's legislation. Germany has been unable to satisfy the demand for white asparagus because of the introduction of a new labour law now requiring 20% of pickers to be German. This has led to an acute shortage in pickers which traditionally have all come from Poland. Farmers used to rely on local students for labour, but are modern students as keen to do the work as their predecessors? Have you ever considered working on farms picking fruit? No, it's not very appealing for a, like a student, unless it pays a lot, like sort of quick in advance, I guess, but no. Uh, it's not my kind of thing, really, picking a bit of fruit, you know, it's not, not my idea of fun. I mean, I don't want to be doing like, a lot of work and then still not getting a good pay at the end of it, because you can get other jobs elsewhere that's kind of easier and you can still get paid a lot. We've had adverts in job centres all over the UK for since December and I can honestly say we've had about 30 applications. We send the people to the farms and they just don't last. Why not pay homegrown labour more money? Wouldn't that help? Agricultural wages are already above the minimum wage and we look for wages to be on average between 15 and 20 percent above the agricultural minimum. Now, I don't believe that's the answer. They just don't want to do the work. The government itself can't even agree where the workforce should come from. The Food and Farming Minister, Lord Rooker, has been supporting the farmers in opposing the changes. Workers from Soares are typically students that come over here for seasonal work and then return home. And farmers want people from outside Europe, so Russia. Yeah, it's about numbers, as far as I can see, uh, in, the, in the Home Office. They're still looking at the effect of opening up the European gateway to all comers uh, pretty well, and they don't want to push it any wider or commit themselves to anything else until they know how that's going. And that's where you've got this face-off between the Home Office and DEFRA, the Environment, Food and Rural Affairs Department. At the end of the day, when you, you're sort of spending a lot of time and money and effort preparing and growing crops, if you can't get them picked, it's an absolute travesty. We lost a lot of fruit last year and look set to continue in the same vein this year unless we can get some, some extra students in to help us. This issue is, in the Home Office's mind at least, linked with immigration. And immigration is a hot political topic. Uh, and it may be they don't wish to change their policy because it is a political topic. As of right now, at this moment, on conversations I've had in the course of the last couple of hours, I don't see much wriggle room on the Home Office. They say that they're listening, they say they're waiting for these studies, but it doesn't sound to me like a department waiting for a new turn. This rapidly expanding Europe has left the agricultural industry with a huge labour shortage and revealed a worrying trend. It would seem that we're now all too posh to pick. And as each wave of new countries join the EU, the willing pool of labour seems to be drying up. And with Croatia, Turkey and Macedonia waiting in the wings to join the EU, just how far will we have to travel to recruit the pickers for the crops of our future?